Hey there everyone, welcome back to our guide on the Rim World of Magic. Today, we'll be taking a look at the Wayfarer class. The Wayfarer is a rather unique class in Rim World of Magic because the way you access it is to have the physically adept trait. This is the same for any other class in the game, but instead of requiring seeking out a book or a scroll, to teach you the ways of combat for that class, the Wayfarer is accessed by its intrinsic ability. The primary way a character can gain a class is if they have no adept trait and they locate a gem of insight, they can simply walk up to it and use it, and they will gain the adept trait of either physically adept or magically gifted, at which point they can choose for physically adept to become the Wayfarer. The Wayfarer is to a degree just a novice of, of physical adept skills. As you can see, there's a handful of abilities here, but these are all added by Cure's classes, and so we're not going to focus on them. We're not even really going to touch on them at all in this video. Instead, I want to talk about what's unique to the Wayfarer itself. I've spoken in previous videos about how classes learn abilities through scrolls. Every class has its own abilities that it can learn. Generally, th I refer to these as master level spells or hidden abilities. Hidden abilities are abilities which can be learned but are as powerful as they will ever be starting out, where master level spells can be leveled after getting them. The exception here, of course, being the Necromancer's Lich Form. There are also a series of other spells and abilities which can be learned, which are referred to collectively as cantrips. These are generally abilities of moderate effectiveness that form the basis of understanding for any physical or magical character. Anything labeled a fighter skill can be learned by any physically adept character, such as the Blade Dancer or the Gladiator. As long as the character has stamina, they can learn a fighter's skill. Any ability, labeled as a mage spell, can be learned by any magically gifted character, including the Blood Mage and the Priest. These would be spells like spell mending and transfer mana. Fighter skills are the abilities that the Wayfarer specializes in. These cantrips, or rote actions, are of moderate effectiveness and tend actually to focus on toggleable abilities. Just to be clear, scan, cloaking device, EMP grenade, backup grenade, thermopill, medigel, combat drugs, and haste all come from Cure's class add-ons, so we won't be covering them today. The first ability we're going to talk about today is Taunt. Taunt is an ability which will be known to any MMORPG player who's familiar with the tank archetype. This allows you to draw aggro, or aggression, from nearby enemies off of your allies. As you can see, when you click the ability, you activate it, and it delivers a level of threat to nearby enemies. This can be pretty effective if you have a high armor or high health wayfarer, and you just want to pull out enemies off of their weaker allies. Evasive Leap is a short teleportation-like ability that makes the character untargetable for but a moment. Sprint is a toggleable ability that greatly increases movement speed but causes additional exhaustion. As you can see, it has a very short activation time and provides you with 30% movement speed, increased blood pumping, increased breathing, but as it said, increases the rate at which the character grows tired. This also requires a constant upkeep of 30 stamina, as well as reducing your stamina regeneration by 20%. Gear Repair allows the character to slowly repair damaged gear over time. As you can see, this requires an upkeep of 20 stamina but does not affect your overall stamina regeneration. This provides you with the gear repair buff, and as I said, will slowly repair your gear over time. Inner healing is an ability that will be hard to show on a Warforged, but this gives the character a natural regeneration rate, as well as giving you the ability to acquire immunity to, to disease faster. This requires an upkeep of 10 stamina. As you can see, it lowers your moving and manipulation, but it will indeed increase your immunity gain speed. Strong Back is another toggleable ability that increases carry capacity and inventory capacity, but causes a 10% increase in exhaustion rate. It requires 20 stamina to be sustained. As you can see, once activated, we are at times 110% tiredness 
and plus 40 carry capacity. Thick skin increases all of your armor values and improves your temperature threshold slightly, while requiring 30 stamina to be sustained, and reduces your stamina regeneration by 15%. As you can see, the status effect is activated, minus 5 uh, minimum comfortable temperature, plus 5c maximum comfortable temperature, as well as raising all armor values. Fighter's Focus increases your mental break threshold and pain threshold while being sustained by 15 stamina. Burning Fury is a ability which can be toggled on or off that causes periodic burning damage to nearby enemies as well as the caster. It cauterizes bleeding wounds and applies a combat enhancement to the caster which provides us with plus 10% movement, 40% breathing, 40% blood pumping, a pain threshold of 40%, as well as immunity to heat damage. While active, you cannot be staggered and will reduce all incoming damage by 35%. This ability, however, is a channeling ability, so it will actively consume your stamina, and once it reaches zero, the ability will be deactivated. Heavy Blow is an ability that can be toggled on or off and increases the, the damage of all attacks by 20%. This requires 30 stamina to sustain. As you can see, when we activate it, we get the status effect Heavy Blow, and we can see melee damage multiplier plus 20%. We then get into our combat techniques. We've got Throwing Knife, which is actually a fairly long range projectile ability intrinsic to the character. So we can just target that poor raccoon and just throw a knife at it. Poor baby raccoon. I'm sorry, raccoon. Oh, I missed. Okay. I'm not sorry anymore. This is a right-click ability, which means if the Wayfarer is caught out in combat, they'll be able to defend themselves at range. Pommel Strike is a melee attack that delivers a non-lethal blow, dealing minor damage and stunning the target for a short period of time. This ability can instantly down upon the more pain the target is in, the more likely to knock out the target instead of stunning them. Autocast is limited to when the target is at 80% or greater chance of being downed instead of stunned. This is a fairly useful ability if you've got the Wayfarer as your warden, or whoever has this ability, really. Our next combat ability is Tempest Strike. Launches multiple attacks in rapid succession. Each attack consumes 20 stamina. The attack will end when the fighter has inf insufficient stamina or after five attacks. Melee weapons generate blades of energy. This attack only works when the weapon equipped is not normally consumed after use. So, as you can see, <laughs> this is another ranged attack. And, uh... Oh, we really heard that baby raccoon. Baby raccoon, let me make it better. No, raccoon, come back. I'm sad about what I've done here today. As you can see, this is another right-click ability that will allow the character to defend themselves at range more effectively. This has a much longer cooldown than either pommel strike or throwing knives, so just keep that in mind. You may have noticed that I didn't stop in between any of those abilities to let you know how to upgrade them. That is because... Abilities for the Wayfarer cannot be upgraded on their own. Instead, the Wayfarer has upgraded versions of the base four upgrades of fitness, strength, coordination, and endurance. The Wayfarer has two trees, a Wayfarer tree and a combat training tree. The combat training tree seeks to improve the Wayfarer's skills, while the Wayfarer tree seeks to improve on the main four upgrades up top. Enhancement increases the damage of any given power and ability resistance. Mastermind decreases ability costs while increasing experience gain. Endurance decreases ability cooldown while increasing stamina regeneration and maximum stamina. All of these abilities can be leveled up to level 30. In the combat training tree, we have balance, which decreases the maximum stamina upkeep cost by 3%, as well as energy regeneration penalties by an additional 3%. At level 15, the Wayfarer gains mana and can learn mage spells. The truly unique side of the Wayfarer lies in lethality and survival. These provide new applications to existing abilities. Level 1 of lethality increases damage from heavy blow by 25%. Level 2 increases Pommel Strike's ch chance to down an enemy. Level 3 applies poison to the throwing knives that will instantly sedate prisoners 
or deal damage over time to hostile pawns. At level 4, Burning Fury's intensity is increased by 50%, increasing the amount of damage that it does. At level 5, the movement speed increase from Sprint is increased by 40%. At level 6, the damage increase for Heavy Blow goes up by an additional 27%. At level 7, Fighter Focus has a 20% chance to disarm a target during a successful melee attack. At level 8, Tempest Strike gains a 20% damage bonus. Level 9 increases the power of Legion copied skills to level 1. At level 10, Sprint's movement speed increases by 50%. At level 11, Heavy Blow increases damage by 30%. At level 12, Throwing Knives throws 3 knives instead of just 1. Level 13 increases the power of Legion learned skills by 2. At level 14, Burning Fury's intensity is increased instead by 100%, and at level 15, the movement speed increase from Sprint goes up to 60%. Under Survival, level 1 makes it so that Fighter Focus reduces rest by 20% less. Thick Skin at level 2 increases resistance by 12%. At level 3, Strong Back increases your mining capabilities. At level 4, increased healing recovery rate is increased by 55%. Level 5 allows gear repair to remove the tainted condition from fully repaired repaired equipment. At level 6, you gain access to Legion for free. At level 7, Thick Skin increases resistance by 14%. At level 8, Strong Back is increasing construction by 20%. At level 9, this increases the versatility of skills learned by Legion to level 1. At level 10, while gear repair is active, a Wayfarer will repair the gear of other pawns during casual interactions. At level 11, Inner Healing will slowly heal the scars and other permanent injuries. At level 12, Thick Skin increases resistance by 15% and grows barbs that can injure a melee attacker. Level 13 increases the versatility of skills learned by Legion by 2. At level 14, Burning Fury's stamina consumption is reduced by 35%. And finally, at level 15, Tempest Strike consumes 25% less stamina per attack. I apologize for just reading off a lot of numbers and stats there, but it's important to contextualize what the Wayfarer can do now. The Wayfarer can be treated as a sort of selfish tank class. As you can see, they have many toggle abilities that allow them to choose how they operate moment by moment. Do you need someone around the base who can haul things quickly? Turn on Sprint and Strong Back. Suddenly, we have increased movement speed by 30%, which is also slightly aided by our blood pumping being higher. As you can see, an increased breathing and blood pumping increases your movement even further. As well, an increase to carry capacity allows them to haul more of a single item at one time. Are you heading into combat and need a strong arm? You can take Heavy Blow and then activate Thick Skin. This will make sure that your character can deal plenty of damage while being relatively safe. If you're truly desperate, however, you can always activate Burning Fury for that extreme damage boost. Just uh, make sure you're dedicated to that fight if you're going to activate Burning Fury. As well, if you need to recover around the base, mixing gear repair and inner healing can allow your fighter to sustain themselves even longer. As a passive defensive character, they're also pretty good as abilities like Pommel Strike, Tempest Strike, and Throwing Knives allows them to have many options on how to deal with enemies. The ability Pommel Strike makes them an effective warden. Well, maybe not specifically a warden as much as they are a character co to combat hostile prisoners. As you level up abilities such as survival and lethality, you simply sort of mix up what it is these characters can accomplish. And if you're more someone like me, who wants to just set and forget these characters, you can always choose to just activate as many of these abilities as possible, which is made even more possible with the balance ability. The last ability I want to talk about with the Wayfarer is perhaps their strangest, and this is the Legion ability. This copy is an ability from any other fighter. All bonuses and restrictions of the copied ability apply. Only one ability can be stored at a time. This is very much so like the Faceless's ability Mimic. The sore limitation here is, of course, that it can only be used on fighter abilities. So here we have every other fighter class represented by a tiefling here. We've got our Scions, our Blade Dancers, our Monks, the Gladiator, Snipers, Death Knights, Rangers, and uh, of course the good old Faceless here. And we can use Legion to take the abilities and we can copy the abilities of almost any of these characters. We just target them with Legion and bam. 
we now have access to the grapple ability. That's pretty nice, because now we can just, you know, grab that man's over to us, and bam, look at that, he's both stunned and over to us, though we're moving straight on. As you can see, we can even grab Wave of Fear from the Death Knight, so we now have that ability. Although we don't generate hate, so I don't believe we can get as much benefit out of that. As you can see, because we've reached level 15 in combat training, we're now also able to use magic, which is fairly useful. Having characters that mix the two is pretty good. This is one of the advantages that the Paladin shared, with our good old wanderer here, though I don't believe they did so to the same effect because they don't have these high level Wayfarer abilities. Overall, I think that the Wayfarer is, if I'm to be completely frank, it's an okay class, but not great. They can serve just about the function of any other melee combatant with a bit more customizability in their toggleable abilities. As you can see, I really like these toggleable abilities. I really like that they'll use most of their abilities on their own. These are amazing abilities that we don't need to micromanage, and that's what makes the Wayfarer so good. They minimize micromanagement while taking proper benefit, but most of these abilities can be applied to any character. Anything from taunt to glare to gear repair, and even Tempest Strike can be given to any character. But I want to know, what do you guys think of the Wayfarer? Do you think that they're a good combatant class? Let me know down in the comments. In the meantime, if you're interested in checking out RimWorld of Magic, I will leave a link to both RimWorld of Magic and Cure's classes in the description down below, because I use both of them, and I realized after I was done recording that Glare is part of that. So that was a fun mistake to make. But you can also join us over on the Discord where we like to talk about RimWorld of Magic, Magic and Video Games, RimWorld, and modding and games in general. You can also catch me over on Twitch three days a week, streaming RimWorld with RimWorld of Magic anywhere between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. I use RimWorld of Magic all the time because it just adds so much to the game. In the meantime though, just remember, nobody cares. Thank you very much and good night. Oh, there's a grenade. Okay, so I assume we're gonna pull that. Th throw it. Ah, no. Ah! Ow, I hurt myself. Oh, holy crap. Thing is bigger than a grenade. Okay, we're just gonna take the grenade and <laughs> Okay, I killed myself in the training room. What's this? Ah! Ah, oh, God.